Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to Thursday, uh, Tuesday. It's Tuesday today. Tuesday, July the 14th. How is everybody doing? How's everybody doing? What are you working on? It feels like forever since I saw you last week. Uh, I could not go live on Thursday. Had an emergency dentist appointment. And uh, so, yeah, I'm on antibiotics and all seems okay right now. I go back on Thursday. <laughs> so I'll keep you updated. Hello, everybody. It's so great to see you. Today, we're going to be working on the uh, fabric cover journal that we made the last time I was live. We made the cover. If this is the first time joining in on this series or any of my videos, I do have a playlist down in the description box. And uh, you could see how we made this fabric covered journal. It's actually like a felt, which feels very silky and felty. And so you can see how we made the cover. Today, we're going to be putting pages inside the journal, adding some embellishments. And I have a couple of entries, some photos to add of our travels. So that's what we're doing today. It's so great to see everybody. Hello. Oh, I've missed y'all. I think next week we're going to make a quilt block. Mimsy, yes. Let me know if it's not as hot. You're testing out a new mask design. I would love to know how what you think of it. Keep me updated because it is hot. It is so hot. It is hot, y'all. Pat, you're trying to finish a quilt so you can move on to your next one. Hello, everybody. It's so great to see you. So if this is your first time joining us, this is live. Feel free to skip around on the replay and get to the good little tidbits that you want to see. Uh, because it's live, I love to interact and uh, spend time with my friends all around the world. And I hope that you take this opportunity, if you're watching live, to have conversation with everyone who's here, because that's one of the reasons why we're doing this, right? Hello, everybody. It is so, so great to see you. So we're going to just jump right in because I have a lot of stuff to share with you today. We're going to be adding pages, embellishments, some lacy stuff. Ella, you have me on the big screen. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's so great to see everybody. Miss Sally, I want to thank you for moderating. Uh, thank you so, so much. I appreciate you. I feel like I'm in good hands when I see that I have a moderator and I know that there's no funny business going to happen during our live. <laughs> Thank you so much. So let's go ahead and jump down to the cutting mat. Let me switch the screen here. I'm hoping that you can hear me okay. I played with the settings on my microphone. <laughs> so I'm hoping that maybe I'm a little bit louder this time. Hopefully. And uh, so my mat here is going to look a little funny because I flipped the image so that you can see I'm working in this direction instead of from this direction. So everything is gonna be mirror imaged just to let you know any words you see on the pages might look funny because they're gonna be mirror imaged. So here's our cover that we made the last time we were live. Uh, it's all ready for some pages. Cannot wait to get this book put together. And this book is going to go into our camper. It's going to go on our travels, and I'm going to document uh, all of the trips that we make, okay? But one of the reasons why I love journals so much, and one of the reasons why I like doing the journal videos is because I want to inspire everybody else. Maybe you already make journals, and you see something in today's video that uh, is new to you, and you can incorporate them in your journals, but I know a lot of you do not make journals. I'm really hoping to inspire you because they make perfect in-between projects, right? Uh, sometimes we make a quilt that is very time consuming. Sometimes we need a break, right? These fabric journals, you could knock a couple of them out 
depending on how fast you work, how intricate you make your journals, they're great projects for those in-between times or if you just need to take a break, right? Let me tell you some of the things that journals are really great for. If you have a uh, someone's birthday coming up, a special anniversary, uh, maybe someone's getting married or having a baby, Christmas, y'all, Christmas, we're already in July, the middle of July. <laughs> Christmas will be here before you know it. Journals make really nice gifts, but you can also make them for yourself and make cookbooks like uh, this is my cookbook that I have downstairs in the kitchen. This journal was made with different bits of my Nana's clothing, like this piece here was a denim jacket that she had. How nice is that? How sentimental is that? So this was a denim jacket that she had, and all the pages, well, not all of them. Some of them are just scrapbook paper, but... Uh, I'll show you here in just a second. Some of it's my Nana's monogrammed stationery. Some of it is from a book from my grandfather. But I keep all of my most used recipes in here. I even have a rice cooker. So every time I cook rice, Miss Connie, this is for you. This is my rice cooker. I got it from Walmart. But it has the instructions. So when I cook my jasmine rice in the microwave, I pull out this book and it tells me, uh, how much water to add versus rice, all that stuff. But then every time I see an interesting recipe on the internet, I jot it down and add it right into my journal. So this one, this journal is used as a cookbook. Easy velvet cookie recipes. It's got coffee dyed paper. It's got little tags. Uh, all of the little fabric tags on the side were my Nana's clothing. So how special is that? Uh, this is her monogrammed stationery. I can write a recipe on that. She loved to collect uh, different ephemeras from her trips. So this is one of her postcards that she bought while she was out and about. I thought that was a neat little embellishment. I add little tags and all kinds of stuff to write little recipes on. Boxes of pasta come with recipes. This one is a no-boil lasagna. I make this all the time, so I cut it off the box and I just stuck it into a pocket. <laughs> and then I handwrite uh, a lot of recipes in here. Uh, so yes, this is my cookbook for my go-to recipes. The stuff that I've made, that we love, that I make all the time, those go in this book. And it sits right on the shelf in my kitchen. Chili cheese dip. This was from a label off of a can. I just cut it out and put it in my book. So you can see all the possibilities if you wanted to use this as a cookbook, right? So there's cookbooks. You could make prayer journals, uh, daily journals. If you're someone who likes to just journal, uh, you could make one for that. Uh, if you're someone who loves to make scrapbooks or do scrapbooking, they're great for that, right? And they're handmade. Maybe you're someone who uses a planner like I am. I made this planner. This one is uh, just like upholstery fabric on the outside. But this is a whole year's planner. I put this one together like a textbook. If you search on YouTube text block journals, You'll see all kinds of tutorials, but this one, all of them are sewn together, just like a textbook, and then put into a cover. Saw the wheel come up. Hopefully our internet is okay today. I hope so. So this one is uh, just like a textbook. It's all sewn in. The pages do not come out. And this is 12 of my monthly signatures all bound into one book. I'm a planner, y'all. I have little uh, tabs for the different months. Let's give you an example. Skip forward, Lisa, skip forward. Here we go. So uh, each one of the months starts with a full calendar and then a weekly spread for each one of the weeks. You can see 
I plan out everything. I have to have to-do lists to keep myself on track. So many people say, how do you get so, you always seem like you're so busy. I have to make, I have to plan out my stuff. (laughs) So I'm a planner and uh, I love making my own planners. This year I did move into a happy planner system, which I kind of really like too, but yes. So you can make your own planners, all different ways that you can use homemade journals, books, scrapbooks, planners, right? So that's some ideas of what you could use this book that we're making in these videos, right? And I think this will probably be the last video. It'll just be a two-part series, how to make the cover. And then for the cover size that I gave you the measurements for in the last video, the pages and the sizes uh, that I'm using. And I'll put those up on the screen here in just a second. It's so great to see everybody. Hello. <clears throat> Mimsy, me too. I'm a touchy-feely kind of person, so I love the different textures of the different kinds of fabric that you can use in these journals. I'm all about it. <laughs> I'm all about it. So we're going to just jump right in uh, for this journal. I really want it to be on an elastic system, right? So I can take the pages in and out. I can add to this book versus if I were to sew in the signatures, okay? And signatures are these right here. And this is what we're going to make today. This is, uh, this really could be a journal all on its own, right? This is a signature. This is all of the pages that are going to go into our journal. I coffee dyed some paper week before last. I put up pay, uh, pictures on my Facebook. So that's a signature, all the pages. And this is a signature, all these blank pages. And this is what we're gonna be putting together. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the measurements up here on the screen. And we'll talk about those here in just a second. But I want to leave them up on the screen long enough so that you can jot them down if you're making a journal this size. Of course, all of this is uh, really up to you, right? There's no rules. And uh, maybe you want to make your journal larger or smaller. So it's all going to be based on the size of the journal that you're making. I'm just giving you sizes of this particular journal and the size that this one is. Ooh, Sally says a lot of the summer upholstery fabrics at Joann's is on clearance right now. Wow, that's good to know. That's good to know. So we're going to get started. I'm going to go ahead and punch the holes for our elastics. Okay, so I'm going to be using my Cropodile. This is a Cropodile 2. It sets little eyelets. I have my eyelets here. And I'm going to be using some elastics that I got from Joann's. Okay, so if you go into Joann's, uh, go into the aisle that has the elastics. And usually this is up on the wall, right? And it's got a little green package with a clear uh, section in it. And you can actually see the elastic. It is thin black elastic but you can also buy this thinner elastic from like Michael's Uh, you get a long card of it with several different colors so you can also find it at like Michael's and Hobby Lobby uh, and it comes in different colors so it doesn't have to be black the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna poke some holes into our journal cover Spread that out nice and flat. And I'm just going to line this up centered just like this so that they're kind of equal, <laughs> equally spaced. I'm just going to take a marker. I want my elastics not very, very close to the edge uh, and not really far in. Okay, I'm going to come down about. Hmm, what would that be? 
like quarter of an inch away from the edge of the journal. And I'm going to, like, this is the center. I'm going to come over a quarter of an inch and just make a mark here. And then quarter of an inch on the other side of the center and make a mark right there. I'm going to do the same thing down here at the bottom, a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch here. So there's my little marks. Now we can punch out the holes. You might not be able to see the marks <clears throat> as well. For the size of uh, eyelet that I'm going to be using, I'll be using the 1 8 setting on my crop a dial. And the first thing we're going to do is punch a hole. We're punching four holes. And I'm just going to line up the little uh, the round cutter right in here that punches the hole right onto the dots that I just made. Just cutting a hole in these four places. How's everybody doing? We're just being creative today. Next week, I think we are going to make a quilt block. We'll do a traditional quilt block. I will put up in advance all the pieces on my Facebook page sometime between now and beginning of next week so that if you want to sew with me live next week, you'll have time, you'll have plenty of time to get all your pieces ready. So we will do that next week. I'm going to flip this around and punch two more holes. Y'all, I have been working on a quilt design that is going to be so much fun. And I am about 75% done with that pattern. I cannot wait to do that with you. So you have all these little nuggets that fall out, make a mess. You might have to come over and trim off pieces that uh, were punched out but are still connected by some threads. Like that lace there might give me a little bit of trouble. We'll see. I didn't quite think about that. And I put the lace on. Hopefully the eyelets stay okay. But really, I mean, you don't have to do the eyelets, but they do add strength to these holes so the elastic doesn't pull at your cover so much, right? You don't have to have them, but they will add a little bit of strength to your cover. I'm just going to pull out four of these and drop the other ones right back in the cup. Carmen, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that that information was helpful. These are the tiny little eyelets that I'm just going to set right into the holes that we just punched. Okay. And uh, I'll flip that back over. I'm almost thinking it's not going to stay because of the lace, but we're going to give it a try. We're going to give it a try. That lace and upholstery fabric <laughs> really thick right there but we'll see how it holds up and I'm just gonna squish that down eee, like that oh yeah okay so see the little eyelet it just finishes that hole and uh, helps protect your journal cover from the elastics, that's all. It does give it a little bit of a more finished look too. Just set that in, and push it down. Sheila, y'all are hot, hot, hot. Yeah, we're hot here too, my glory. July and August, hot, hot. I'm going to turn this over and put the other two eyelets right down at the bottom. Stay in 
there. Stay in there. This is probably the most boringest part. <laughs> but it goes by pretty quick. We'll be stringing elastic here in just a second. Again, the measurements that uh, I'm giving in this series are just for a book this particular size. Y'all get creative and make your journals any size you want. This one's going to give me a little bit of hassle. I see why. Let me make that hole a little bit bigger. Some of the file folder didn't punch through. There we go. Let's see if it works now. There was a bunch of junk in there. All right. All right, and that is that. We can put the crocodile away. So now I have my four eyelets and I'm ready to string some elastic. Now y'all, there are tons and tons of videos all over YouTube. If you wanna sew in your pages, uh, I even have some here on my channel, but there's so many out there. If you'd rather sew in your pages and make them more permanent, I kind of like the idea of being able to take pages out and add pages if I need to. I'm going to take some of this elastic and the way I measure it, measure it is I just take it the length of the book from top to bottom. I do that two and a half times. One, two, and a half. And I cut it. That's going to give me a little bit of extra so I can tie a knot. Not technical, not complicated. <laughs> and now we can go ahead and start running these elastics. So I'm going to start from the inside of my book. I'm going to start here and go from the inside out. We're going to come back up on the other side and come back through the next eyelet, just like that. Now y'all, you can get really creative and add little charms to this elastic. You could add tassels and dangly things, all different kinds of things that you could do to decorate your journal. I'm gonna take the elastic and go through the bottom hole through the front and come out through the next elastic, just like that. Okay, so now we have two ends. I'm gonna pull it and tie a knot so that the elastic has a little bit of tension. If you leave this really loose, your pages might sag at the bottom of your book. So we're gonna add a little bit of tension to this elastic, like that. See the Cover starting to lift up a little bit. That's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and tie a knot in the elastic. Just like you're tying your shoes, that kind of knot. I'm gonna pull on the knot so it's nice and tight. Just like that. And then you can leave your extra bits of elastic if you think maybe you might want to loosen this up over some time, but I'm okay with my elastic, so I'm just gonna trim up the little tails just like that. So now we have two elastics inside of our journal. Before we move on, I wanna do one more thing. One more thing to the front. But see the elastic on the outside? Here's the top. And then there's the bottom. That's what it looks like from the outside of the journal. This is, uh, I forget the exact name of it, Danielle, but if you go to uh, Joanne's, 
I think it's made by Dritz, but I could be wrong. It's in a green package in the elastic section. It's usually hanging up on the wall. And uh, they have different kinds. This is the smallest round elastic it's in a green package. And you can actually see the elastic through a clear section of the package to make sure that it's the right one. But I also have found this same thickness round elastic, just like this, in different colors uh, from Michael's and Hobby Lobby, too. It comes on a long card with several different colors. And uh, yeah, you could use different colored elastic. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is just add a little nameplate to the front of my journal. For this, uh, I have these Tim Holtz. Uh, they call them ornate plates, right? And uh, so I'm going to be adding one of these to the front of my journal. You don't have to if you don't want to. So I'm going to be using this oval one. And I have already made the little plate that goes inside with some coffee dyed uh, cardstock and a little sediment that I cut out of one of my uh, scrapbooking papers. I just cut out Journey and glued that right to the center of some coffee stained cardstock. So we're going to glue that to the inside. There's a little bit of a lip where this sits right down inside, just like that. And I'm just going to glue that right in. And for that, I'll use some Aline's Tacky Glue. Yes, Miss Vicky, it is the uh, 1 8 cord. Really small, not very thick at all, and it's round. So great to see everybody. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to this little lip once my glue starts to come out. <laughs> I think my bottle's almost empty. And this doesn't have to be pretty. No one's going to see that. Spread it around with my fingers, like that. Wipe that on my jeans. <laughs> and just sit that little piece right down inside. Now, ordinarily, I'd probably let this dry for a few minutes before I mess with it anymore. I'm just going to hold it in place for a second just so it grabs. Make sure it's straight just like that. Isn't that? I know that's backwards. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's pretty cool, right? And then you're just going to take a sharp pokey thing and punch two holes because they come with these uh, little pins forget the exact name for them and uh, they go right through two holes on the side so I'm just going to poke a hole right through my cover let's see where do we want this that looks good poke a hole poke a hole and I don't mind these showing through the inside of my cover. I think that looks kind of neat. But if you want to add these and hide that, uh, then you need to do it before you add the papers to the inside of your cover. This velvety fabric on the outside. Yes, it's called an awl. <laughs> I'm just poking holes right through the cover. I want to be able to see them. And it's kind of hard with this velvety fabric to see the hole from the other side. I'm just making the hole a little bit bigger. It's so great to see y'all. I'm just going to see if I can easily poke this through the hole. Dun, 
dun, dun, dun, dun, dun. didn't make it big enough. Y'all bear with me for a second. There we go. It comes right through the other side and you just open it up and flatten it out. My hands are extraordinarily shaky today. <laughs> Hook it through and flatten it out on the other side. So there's our little nameplate. Again, that's just totally optional. It looks funny because it's mirror imaged, but this is on the right side of my book. <laughs> so now we have the elastics in. I'm going to show you with these two signatures. If you just wanted to add two signatures to your book, I'm going to show you how to make these here in just a second, but you open it up right to the center. These are not uh, sewn or stapled. They're just stacked right on top of each other and then folded right in half. You open it right to the center and then you put it right through your elastic, just like this. So there's one signature and you take your second one and open it up right to the center and put it through just like that. So running your elastics gives you two available elastics or two signatures. However, we're going to make a third signature and I'm going to show you how you can add a third one to a two elastic journal. Okay, so that's what my journal would look like. The pages are held in by the elastics. Just like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a third signature and I'm going to show you how you can add that in. Okay. This is probably the most fun part for me. <laughs> so I have on this screen some different measurements. If you want to make a signature cover that has no pocket, just like this one, it's just cardstock that is cut to 12 inches wide and nine and seven eight inches tall. Okay, that is this cover here. It has no pocket at the top. It's just a cover for this signature, this size. All right. And then if you want to make one with a pocket, you're going to leave your paper at 12 inches by 12 inches, and you're going to fold up the bottom portion two and a half inches. And that's what I'm going to show you because I want to make a signature that is uh, has a pocket out oh, some yummy it has a pocket so I can add little goodies to it right so this will be my cover for the third signature here it is 12 inches by 12 inches it is coffee stain isn't that pretty I even tried uh, I added a little bit of soy sauce to my coffee which made it a little bit darker it smelled like soy sauce for about three or four days till it was really dry. <laughs> but that's okay. I got some really lovely results adding a little bit of soy sauce to my coffee. It made it a little bit darker. So for this cover, we want a pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and just line this up. Nice and straight on some lines on my mat. And because I want it uh, nine about nine and a half inches tall. I'm going to fold up two and a half inches. So let's just mark that. Two and a half right there. First, I'm going to fold it this way so I can use my little mark that I made. And then we'll fold it back the other way. Nice and straight. Now we can fold it back this way. And there is our little pocket. So those measurements are on the screen. And then, you know what? We just fold this right in half and this makes the cover of our third signature. Just like that. I did not bring 
<laughs> a little score tool over. So I'm just going to use a hard surface just to burnish those folds nice and good. To close off the ends, you could glue them. You could use washi tape. You could staple them. I'm going to take this over and just run a straight stitch on the edges to close off the edges of my pockets. Okay, so let me switch you over to the sewing machine. I have some thread and an old needle, uh, one of my old t-shirt quilting, putting together needles. It's a jersey needle. It's uh, the largest one that I use, which is like a 14, I think. Instead of throwing away my old needles, I save them for my journal making and I sew through paper with them. So that's what that needle is. And I'm just going to use a straight stitch and just close to the edge of the paper. You could use decorative stitches, zigzag stitches. I'm just using a straight stitch today. I am going to increase the stitch length though so it doesn't cut the paper. Then flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. So it's just as simple as that. Again, you could glue it. All depends on the look that you're going for, right? Because I'm a quilter, I love stitched pages in my journals. I love the extra little threads, so I leave them there. See that little thread hanging off the edge? So there is our pockets, and when this is folded in half, you'll have two pockets on the front and back of your pages, right? So there's our cover. I'm gonna go ahead and take this down so you can see the full screen now. If I need to pull these measurements back up, just let me know. Now for the pages of my book, I like to use all kinds of stuff. I love junk journaling. So like if you saw my cookbook, I have just book pages in there. I use those as backgrounds and add stuff to it. I like using a random variety of pages. So let me show you some of the stuff that we're going to make this signature with. Of course, I like my journals to look rustic and old and vintage, antique. So I coffee stain or tea dye. Most of the time, most of the pages that I add into my journals. But let me just show you a variety. Uh, of pages that I tea stained the other day. So this is actually uh, cardstock from a paper pad. Uh, I have copy paper that uh, I've coffee stained. This is a legal size piece of paper that I've just fold folded. I save all my little tidbits. This is a piece of legal paper that I folded. From paper pads, you get all kinds of little goodies that you can add into your book. We might add that right in there. This is just regular eight and a half by 11 standard size uh, copy paper that I've uh, tea stained. So isn't that pretty? And the sad part is you really can't see on the screen how pretty it is in person. I wish you could. But thank goodness it does not smell like soy sauce anymore. Because <laughs> I used coffee and soy sauce this time. But it just really adds a nice vintage, older look to the pages. So I'm just going to flip through. So you can see just the assortment of stuff that we have. Again, some legal size paper. And that pretty. So I have a whole great big assortment of all of that. And then uh, this is from a paper pad called 
Snaps. Let me see if I can grab that. Uh, from this paper pad, I pulled out some pages. I'm not sure that I'm going to use all of it, but I love the maps and the stamps and the ledgers. I'm all about that. And so, uh, yeah, I pulled out several pages from that. So we might use some of that. Postcards, all that stuff. But yes, I love the stamps. I'm all about that. <laughs> and then uh, I love putting envelopes from cards in my journals. So there's one. I know we want to use that. And here's a smaller one. Here's a different sized one. We're going to add all three of those. This is a vintage book page. And because I'm a quilter, I think I want, really want to add one of these in there and use it as a background. So we'll add that. This I bought from a thrift store. Look, 25 cents. It's never been used, but it's like rice paper. Very thin. Uh, it almost looks homemade. It's got different textures of little things in it. I don't even know what that is. But I love to use stuff like this in my journals. There's another envelope. This one says mom. It was a Mother's Day card. Let's throw that in there. Then I have some old paper from some shipping. And I love to add stuff like this in there too. So that's just an idea of some of the pages that you could, or some of the different things that you could pull to make your pages. Let's go ahead and we'll add this. This. Because I love ledgers, we're going to add that. We'll use that. We'll use some of this copy paper. And let's see. We'll use those. So this right here is going to make up the pages of our book. No, it's it's really not complicated. It's really it's probably so simple. Here is the cover of our book. I'm just going to open that up and we're going to create the pages and just lay them one on top of the other, okay? This I want to add in a little bit. So, we have a card. I'm just going to open this up. It's already folded. I'm just going to lay that right in the center, just like that. Let's get some of this ledger paper. I'm just going to fold that. It doesn't even have to be exactly in half. It creates different size pages, depending on where you fold it. So this is just going to be a little tab towards the back of this insert, right? That's just going to fit right there. Let's add some of this copy paper. So this I will fold in half. Just like that and add it right in there. We'll do two pages like that. There's two pages. Let's See. Let's add one of these pages in there. I'm just going to grab my ruler here and tear off. Let's see. I don't want it to stick beyond the corners of my signature here. So I'm just going to make a little tear right there and line my ruler up. Sometimes I use my paper cutter. Sometimes I tear it like that so that it has a teared edge. It <laughs> depends on the look you're going for, right? Now I'm just going to fold that in half and add that right in. This here is a legal size piece of paper. So uh, I have folded it in half lengthways. And then brought it up and folded it in half again. So I would like to create two pockets from this. 
we're going to go ahead and sew the edges of these two pieces of paper or you know what for this one we'll just use glue just use some glue and make it I have some Fabri-Tac glue so great to spend some time with y'all I'm just adding a little bit of glue right to the edges it doesn't have to be pretty like that hold that back up press the edges and now I have two pockets like that we'll put that down let's use some of the stamp paper because I really love that We'll fold that in half. That just like that. Bring in some more copy paper. Like that. Like that. <laughs> See how fun it can you just get creative with the different pages I'm going to fold this old book page put that in there and then let's see I wanted to add this envelope as a pocket so I'm just going to open that up just like that and anything else I really want to add to this yes we'll do a flip out page so this is a legal size piece of paper I folded it not quite in half okay so the first time I folded it it had a little edge right here on the side and then I folded that in just like that so what will happen is it actually creates a fold out page like this in your book whoops there you go just like that so that's pretty cool right I'm going to add one more piece right in the center, just a piece of cardstock. I'm going to use my ruler again. Tear that off. And we're going to add that as the center of our signature. So there we go. Here's our third signature. Just like that. Yay. So uh, at this point, if you want to sew in some lace, you could do that. Let me show you. I like to decorate the edges of my, pa my uh, pages. With lace you could sew this on uh, I'll show you how easy that is let's go ahead and add a piece of lace to the cover see I have all kinds of stuff here I'm just gonna take an eyeball measurement and cut that the length of my page I'm going to take all the pages out except for the cover. Again, you could just glue this right in place if you wanted to. I'm going to show you how you can sew it on. It's really quick and easy. I'm going to bring it right over to the sewing machine. Line it up where I want it. And uh, this time I'll use a zigzag stitch. I'm going to go as wide as I can go. I'm going to spread it out to like a 4.0 with my stitch length. Curve straight, Lisa. <laughs> okay. 
So just like that, we've sewn on the uh, lace to the edge of our book. Again, you could just glue it. I kind of like the look of the stitches on the inside, but that's just me, right? We can bring over the chunky part of our book and just lay that right back in. So it looks like this. We can go through and add laces and trims to other pages too if we wanted to. I'll show you what it looks like to glue a piece. Again, I'm just eyeballing and gluing. You can use any kind of glue. It's just my favorite it happens to be the Fabri-Tac because it dries really fast. It's nice and permanent and it's clear. I'm gonna put a little bit of finger pressing, just like that. I can work with the next page if I wanted to. I love the look of the laces on the edges of the pages. You can make pockets with extra wide lace. How awesome would that be? You know what, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do it. Just gonna do a rough cut. <laughs> it's not gonna be exact and precise. I just want it to be size that fits really pretty on the outside cover. I'm going to remove the inside pages again. I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. And we'll just do, let's see, let's do a straight stitch all the way around the edge of the and make this a pocket. Oh, I think that'll be so pretty. Hey, I just did a straight stitch all the way around. So there's my little pocket. Let me show you what that'll look like. If you get notes or pictures, you can just put them in your little lacy pocket, just like that. Ooh, I really like that. <laughs> All right, so there is the inside going back into our cover, just like that. All the different pages. Let me show you how you can add a third signature to a two elastic journal. Okay, so I showed you a little bit ago. In case you missed it, you can go back on the replay. We did the elastics, and it has two elastics for two inserts or two signatures. I'm going to go ahead and remove one of these, just like that. So the other one is still on one of the elastics. We're going to bring these two sign signatures together. And I'm going to bring a little bit more elastic back out. Okay. I'm going to do just a rough estimate. I'm going to measure the length from top to bottom two times. Just like that. And cut my elastic. Then I'm going to bring the two ends together, just like this. I'm going to tie them into a knot, just holding the two ends. I'm going to make a loop and feed those two ends right through the loop, make myself a knot, just like that. Now I'm not going to cut these extra ends in case this is too tight and I need to let it out a little bit. And uh, I did not tighten the knot exactly really tight. 
in case I need to make some adjustment, okay? So we're gonna take the insert that we just made, we're gonna open that up to the middle. So there's the middle of this one. And then we're gonna take the signature that we just removed from the journal. We're gonna open that up to the middle, like that. And we're gonna put these two journals back to back, just like this. And we're gonna put this elastic that we just made right around them, just like that. I like the knot to sort of be in the middle and not showing at the ends. So there's our two signatures joined together by an elastic. Give me just one second. For some reason, my chat's not working. Dun, dun, dun. Why are you not working? Let me close this down and open that back up. There we go. <laughs> so both uh, signatures are joined by an elastic. And now we treat this as one signature, okay? We bring our cover back in and we open it up. There's our two signatures. We're gonna feed the first one under the under the elastic, just like that. And now the elastic from the journal is right in the middle holding these two books side. So now she's a chunky monkey. Look how chunky my journal is. <laughs> See that? I love the look of all different size pages. I don't know what's going on with my YouTube. There we go. There we go. So yeah, she is a chunky, chunky monkey. Look at this, all different size pages. The elastics are holding in the pages. They're not coming out. And if I wanted to add a page, I could just slip something right through that elastic. Right? That's one of the reasons why I love uh, travel notebooks with an elastic uh, system. So, dun, dun, dun. I thought before we finished up for today's video, let me go ahead, because this was in a paper pad and I wanted to add this right in there and write the capons in there because this journal is going into our camper. I'm just gonna add this little book plate right on the inside with some Fabri-Tac glue. Of course, there's all different kinds of ways that you can embellish your books. Oh, I love, one of my favorite pastimes is watching journaling videos here on YouTube. I get so much inspiration and ideas from them. I'm gonna put it right here like this. There's no rules. I love projects with no rules. So now I can write the capons right on there. Just like that. So one more thing I wanted to, to do. Let's see, this was one of our camping trips. I've got some, got some stickers. Let's see. And we're going to make our first post in my new travel journal. It's just a way to inspire you to use your books. Let's see. So we went to a Newport News Park. This was our first outing with our camper. We brought our bird with us. <laughs> and uh, I took a few pictures. 
So let me see if this picture will fit right in this lace pocket. It might be too big. Maybe. Oh, it's going to cover his face up. I'm not going to do that. There we go. Sally, one of the reasons why I love the fabric tack glue is because it does not warp the paper. Uh, you can use Aline's tacky glue. There's uh, the Tombow Mono glue. Uh, you could use regular Elmer's glue, but I oftentimes see that the paper warps or wrinkles from the wetness of the glue. One of the reasons why I love the fabric tack glue is because that does not happen. It does have a little bit of a smell to it. Oh no. It does have a little bit of a smell to it. But uh, it goes away pretty quick because the glue dries really quick. So we're going to add Harlan right to this first page. Like that. I'll come back later and write dates of our first trip and where we went. And uh, this was a campground. And I want to, we saw a couple of sites at this campground that would be so awesome. Uh, we walked through the campground and we wrote down different sites that we'd like to have next time if they're available. I want to write that down and keep it. Uh, keep a record of it so that the next time we stay there, we can ask them, hey, do you have this site and this site open? Because we'd really like to stay at those sites. Let's see, we can add a picture of our bird who went camping with us. He is officially a camp of two. <laughs> he loves it so much, I'm so surprised on how much he loves going with us, but I think he just likes being included. <laughs> Glue that down. What's really cool is because you can take these pages out with the elastics, you could sew in the pictures. You could do that too. So let's see. I don't want to cover up the front of that. I already messed it up with glue. <laughs> so here we'll do a little picture collage right here. And then I'll use this page to write down about our first camping trip, the dates, where we were, what site we stayed at, and um, a little bit about our time. Oh, Sally said the camper needs to be in the front pocket. I have another picture of the camper that I can put up front. I have two more trips to document. We did, this was our first camping trip with the RV. We have a pop-up, but we're giving that to our son. Uh, so this was our first camping trip. And then we wanted to be adventurous. And so we did a boondocking overnight trip. I have pictures about that trip. And then, um, and then we went to the Eastern Shore last weekend. And so I have pictures and stuff from that trip too. So yeah, I have more pictures of the camper I can put in the pocket. But yeah, you can use these journals as scrapbooks, uh, baby's first year, and put in uh, you know, little bits of clothing, little hair ribbons, you know, maybe you put a bow in their hair or, you know, all the kinds of stuff that you would save from the first year. <laughs> See, let's put, yeah, yeah, I like that. And that'll give me space to write.
So there's my picture. Let me put the lid back on this glue because it does dry really quick. And then you can come back in with stamps. Let's see, is there anything in here we want to use? Yeah. Stickers, all kinds of fun stuff. Let's see. I tend to like the more flat stuff because the more 3D stuff you have in there is kind of hard to write, <laughs> right? So I tend to gravitate towards the flatter stickers. Every once in a while I'll do something that has uh, like a 3D effect. Let's see. There we go. I'll come back in and really decorate these pages when I have time and can just sit down and enjoy the process. So there's some pictures of our first trip. I think that's going to be really awesome. <laughs> I have my little book plate inside. I have a lacy pocket. One last thing that I want to add because I love this. Not everybody loves this, but a while back ago, I made a video about making paper beads. I love to hang them off of the lace from my pages as just little danglies. That's just me. Not everybody loves that. So I have two paper beads that I'm going to add as just little dangly charms. I'm just going to stick them right into the lacy bits. Little holes in the lace, just like that. Bend them so that they'll stay put. I really feel like I'm rushing through all of this. I just had so many ideas I wanted to share with you as inspiration. I'll bend that here in just a minute. But there's one. And let's add the third, uh, second one back here. Just so you can see what it'll look like with my little dangly charms. And these are just made with paper. <laughs> Scrapbooking paper. So now we have three signatures on a two elastic journal. There she is, y'all. Let me close it up so you get to see what it looks like from the side with my little beads on the side. The lacy trims on the sides of the pages. Coffee dyed all the pages. I even used soy sauce this time to make them a little bit darker. You could add little tabs to the top to the bottom. I have a whole great big stack of fabric, leftover upholstery fabric, velvet fabric, some silky fabric. I might see, I need, <laughs> I might add as little tabs, just like I did with my cookbook. I just fold them over. You can staple them or glue them or sew them. This fabric folded over the page to make little tabs. So yes, all kinds of fun stuff, all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, we're going to be doing a trip to Indiana towards the end of the month for my mom's surgery. Mimsy, yeah, paper beads. Let me show you up close if it'll focus. I do have a video on my channel, but there's so many paper bead videos here on YouTube that really, I don't know the technical terms for all the beading language. So my video is a little rough around the edges, right? But I show you how you can make paper beads. And then I put them on, uh, I think these are called head pins or flat pins, and make little dangles and charms with them. Just using scrapbook paper. I used paper right from a paper pad, just like something like this and made paper beads with them. 
and then add them as charms to my journals. Just like that. Isn't that pretty? I know it's not going to focus very well, but there you go. So yes, there's so many pages in this journal. And as I add pictures to it, it's just going to get chunkier and chunkier. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why I wanted a wider curved spine to give myself lots of room to add all kinds of stuff into this journal. So yes, yes, I'm really excited. We'll just do a quick flip through. I even love where I covered up my goof up with the lace on the inside of the cover. I love that. <laughs> I don't think you can really mess up a journal. And maybe that's one of the reasons why I love making them so much. You know, when you're making a quilt, you have to be so precise, right? To make sure everything fits right. To make sure your seam allowance is right. You know, make sure your cutting is accurate. And I can do all of that. But every once in a while, I just need a project where I can just play and I don't have to measure. I don't have to be precise and accurate. And it still comes out amazing, right? That's what making the journals for me is. It gives me that creative freedom where everything turns out wonderful. And I don't have to drain my brain, right? So we'll just do a quick flip through. I love that the pages are different sizes. Here's the little pocket that we created. Most of them are coffee stained. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I love the little envelope pieces because you it gives you a creative, unique page to journal on, right? Here is the other side of that envelope. It's created a little pocket I can put notes inside of. Yes, yes. Who here has made a journal before? Have you ever made a journal before? It doesn't have to be exactly like this one, but have you ever made a journal before? This will be awesome to record dates and stuff on. Here's the other side of the pocket that we created, and that's the signature that we made together right there. Going into the second one. Here's a little pocket. Susie, you've made dozens. Oh, I would love to see them. I love watching flip throughs of people's journals. That's what I do. I watch quilting videos and journaling videos and all kinds of stuff like that. And I love to watch the flip throughs of journals just to get ideas for different pages, different layouts, different ideas. I'm just doing a quick flip through. There's another pocket, another flip out. Do you keep coffee and tea stained papers on hand or dye them as you need them? Danielle, for this uh, journal, I had to dye some. I had to do papers. Now I have a great big stack of leftovers that uh, will, I'll keep on hand for my next project. Usually I do like a great big table full all at one time. I do have a link to how I do mine uh, in the description box below. I just take a variety variety of stuff outside onto my table outside and just spray it and let it dry all outside and I'm able to do tons and tons of papers and lace that way uh, so for this journal all of this was done like a week ago <laughs> but now I have a great big stack of extras that you know I can pull from or make, I could make a whole nother journal with the extra tidbits that I have. So 
just continually flipping through. But look at all of the pages. All of the pages. And you can add pages because they're on elastics. You can add more pages. There's another little pocket. I just sewed that with a straight stitch. More pages. And then into our third book. I love the map paper for travel journals. <laughs> There's another little pocket. But yeah, they sell the uh, scrapbooking pads, paper pads, and all different themes, right? There's a unique little size pocket right there. Uh, so if you are making like a baby's first year, they have paper pads for that. So it could all be themed, right? It could all fit the theme of whatever kind of journal or book that you're making. I love adding washi tape to the edges of my pages. <laughs> I love washi tape. There's another little pocket. And what's awesome about the elastics also is that as this gets chunkier and chunkier, it's going to get harder and harder to actually write in this book, I think. So it's nice that I could remove this signature and lay it all out flat and work on a page and then slide this right back into my journal cover. I think it makes it so much easier to actually use the book, right? So there is my book. Tons and tons is, I didn't even count the pages, but there's a lot, right? Isn't that so pretty? So yeah, if you're just joining me, the, in part one, we make the fabric cover. And in this video, I show you how to string the elastics. And I'll walk you through making one of the signatures. And then I show you how to put two signatures in. Or if you want to add a third one or multiples, how to make more elastics and string your uh, and group your signatures together so that you can work off of a two elastic jerk. So that's what we've done today. Now I'm ready to go put this in the kit. Well, no, I have two more trips to document and then I have some things to write about our trips. And then this will go into our RV and stay there. And I'll just have some glue and some stickers and stuff like that out there so that I can actually use this while we're traveling and glue stuff in. And if there's something I want to sew in, then when we get home, I'll actually bring this in the house. Because I can remove the pages, I can still sew elements into this journal and then put them back. I'm really, really hoping that this has been something that's been inspiring to you. I love that curved spine. <laughs> Phyllis says, I'm not into journaling, but I wanted to see how this is done. I'm not that busy to need a journal. Also don't have an exciting life to actually journal my daily life. Oh, Sheila, I bet you you're more exciting than you know. I know a lot of quilters who make journals and then document their projects into their journals. Step by step. Uh, they take notes uh, for future projects in their journals. They put fabric swatches in their journals for future projects that they're doing. You could make a journal like a cookbook, just like this one. This one stays in my kitchen, and it has all my favorite recipes in it. It has bits of my Nana's clothing, so it makes it really sentimental. There's a little charm on my elastic, just like that. Isn't that cute? So this is actually a cookbook. So even if your life isn't exciting, I bet you it's more exciting than you realize, but uh, you can make cookbooks, uh, all kinds of stuff. Susie, you're newly inspired to get one made. Yay, yay. Mimsy, you're thinking about making one for your quilt. That's such a great idea. Sally says, uh, antique bookstores are great places for pages as well. Yes, they are. 
I love the thrift stores. You can get really great books at the thrift stores for very, very cheap. Oh, Sheila says, if you look in the jewelry section, they have fasteners to put. That's really what I need as a fastener so that these won't keep falling off or to bend this into a loop. That's really what I need. Something like that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Dishpenny said you should design a quilting journal. I did. I have videos. We made a quilt. I put together a kit, actually. And then it's several videos long. It's a whole series. And uh, you got the kit. And then I showed you how to make the journal with the kit. But if you just go back and watch those videos, you could make one all on your own. But the videos are still on my channel for you to see. Yes. You could, I have all kinds of quilting books. You could remove the pages and have quilts inside your journal or your book. Yes, honey. You're so right. A fishing a swap swivel would make a great fastener. It would. Do you have any downstairs? Because that would be really handy. Betty, I bet it's really nice to have your mom's journals on hand, right? It's very sentimental. Linda, yes. If you follow it in the, in the uh, series, ha uh, Happy at Home Together, this is a great way to incorporate all the notes that you took for all of the traditional quilt blocks. Yes, th this would be the perfect size journal for that too. because It's kind of big. She's kind of big. It would be great for that. Oh, it's been so great to see everybody. It's been so great. I'm sure that I have missed lots and lots of comments. So I will go through this evening and read through everything. If you have any questions for me that I happen to miss, Let's take a minute to go ahead and answer those. So if you have any questions for me, type them out in all caps and we'll just spend a few minutes answering questions if you have them because I certainly don't mean to ignore anyone and I would not miss your questions on purpose. Sometimes I just get so involved in what I'm doing <laughs> that uh, I miss stuff. So if you have questions for me before we go, now would be a great time to ask. <laughs> that says, I love that Harlan watches sometimes. He does. He's working, but he'll turn on his phone while he's, wa while he's working. He's so sweet. Just flipping through. I cannot wait to go back and read all the conversation that I've missed. That's what I'll be doing this evening. Next week, okay, if you just joined in and you missed uh, the beginning of this video, you can go back and watch the replay, right? But I think next week we will be making a traditional quilt block. I will put all the piece counts and measurements for that quilt block on my Facebook page. So if you have Facebook but haven't gone to my Facebook page, there is a link down in the description box that will take you over there. Keep an eye out on Facebook for those measurements. And I'll try to put a post here on YouTube. Have you ever seen someone, just, it's not a video, it's just like a little post pop up from your people that you're subscribed to? I will try to put it here on YouTube as well as a post. And uh, for those of you who don't have Facebook. How much notice are you going to give for the quilt block next week? I would like to go uh, this week and figure out what block we're doing and figure out all the pieces. And so by this weekend, uh, I'll have those pieces up and the measurements and we'll go live next Thursday. Next week, Thursday. I don't have my 
planner in front of me, I would give you the date. 12 o'clock noon. Rochelle, yes. This will, is all being recorded. So we're live right now, but when this is done, it takes a few minutes to process the video, but you can come back on the replay. This is part two. In part one, we made the fabric cover. And in today's video, I showed you how to add the elastics, uh, how to make your signatures, which is the pages inside your book, and add them to your elastics. And then just some quick ways to embellish your pages. And then I added pictures uh, of our first camping trip. So that's what we did today. But it's a two-part series. And uh, the link to my journaling playlist is in the description box below. And you can save that. And uh, yeah, it'll be really easy to find. So it's been super awesome to spend some creative time with you today. This is some of my favorite, as much as I love making quilts, I love making quilts so much, but I just really enjoy the non-structured projects as well, right? Just being creative, just, and then no stress. <laughs> That's what these are all about. I'm really hoping that this video series inspired you I would love to hear from you down in the comment section if you're watching on the replay. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me on this Tuesday. Next week, we will be back on Thursday, okay? And uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you get notified when I go live. Uh, I would love to do a spontaneous live. So if you're subscribed, you'll get notified. Thank you all so much for spending time with me. And the rest of your long distance family, it's been great to hang out with you today. I hope you make a journal. I hope you do. And if you do, I would love to see pictures. All my contact information is in the description box. You can send me pictures of your journals. I would love to see them. All right, everybody. I hope the rest of your week is fantastic. I will see y'all for sure next Thursday. Bye, everybody.